Hey y'all, Culture and Fight here, got Chris with me. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about Hanukkah and the candles. You know about those candles, Chris? I know a little bit about them. Yeah, where they kind of, what do you know? I know that they have some significance. I think you're supposed to light one each day or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not really sure as what they do does not come from the scripture itself. It's right. kind of like a tradition that was included in the Talmud or something like that. It's not in our Bibles. So what they're doing, I'm not sure. But the reason why we're doing this is because we got a comment from a viewer. If you would, go ahead and read that comment. I ask you how many candles to be lit. Seven or nine candles. I've seen in other vlogs the original menorah is seven. The other vlogs is nine. Which am I to follow? Okay, now, like I said, this would be included something somewhere in the Talmud. Right. So that, that if you want to understand this particular element of the tradition, uh, um, you know, going to have to, you know, say that you're going to have to go to like, you know, someone who studies the Talmud. Someone and, who specializes in that book. Yeah, but, you know, we pay close attention to the Bible over here. Right. Particularly the apocryphal portion of the Bible where we find books like the Maccabees. Right. Did you know there's four books of Maccabees? There are. Yeah, there's four books. In the second book of Maccabees, we actually read about what really happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, now where they're getting this lighting of the candle from, okay, right. like I said, it's 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 the menorah lighting ceremony is based off of the Talmud, but where the Talmud is getting that from is based on what we're going to see here in the book of Maccabees in chapter uh, one, right? Where why they're lighting it in the first place, like just how with the feast of Passover we get how to do it and stuff from the book of Leviticus. But the origin of the story comes from Exodus. Yep, you're absolutely right. And when we look back over here at Google, when we put in the um, uh, candles of Hanukkah or something like that, we see that there's a lot, a lot of um, tradition. You may not be able to pronounce all of these words. Do the, do the best that you can with it. But go ahead and read what Google says about the candles. On the first night of Hanukkah, there are usually only two candles on your Hanukkah. The Shamesh in the center and the first night's candle. Each night, add a new candle before lighting. All right, so like I said, you're not going to find that being described, that ceremony being described in any of the scriptural texts. All right. right? And the Talmud, of course, is not scriptural. It's kind of more traditional. Mm -hmm. um, so if we really want to know what's going on here, the only place we can hear about this is in the book of Maccabees, which is the one book that you hear about the whole feast of Hanukkah in the first place. Right. Over there in the book of John and chapter 10, I believe we hear that the Messiah uh, celebrated the feast of dedication or Hanukkah. Right. But it's only really described what we're supposed to do on the day and when it falls in the books of Maccabees. Well, also in the book of 2 Maccabees, we see right here where it's going to start talking about this fire of Nehemiah or Nehemiah's fire. Okay. All right. Now, just as a little bit of background in the second book, this would be the time in which they've already uh, taken back the temple. Okay. You read a lot about the wars in the first book, but you see here they're kind of in celebration mode here. Um, you know, and singing praises and stuff. Yeah. But if we want to find what this whole lighting of the candle ceremony started in the first place, we have to come down to verse about 18. Right. Okay. This is where the fires of the menorah and all of that stuff, this is where it originates from. Whether you have a menorah in your house or not, whether you believe it or not. This is kind of where it starts from. That's the point of this video. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll help her decide how many candles she's supposed to have. Go ahead and read that, Chris. Verse 18. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple upon the five and twentieth day of the month, Kaislu, we thought it necessary to certify you thereof, that ye might also keep it. As the feast of the tabernacles and of the fire, which was given us when Nehemiah offered sacrifice, after that he had builded the temple and the altar. 
Okay, so now this is a lot, a lot, a lot going on about Hanukkah in this verse, telling right. us the timing, telling us even what we're supposed to do, supposed to keep it like the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeah. Yeah, but you see down here where it starts talking about this fire of Nehemiah. Now, so this is the text, the primary text for this class, because like I said, this is where this so-called lighting ceremony comes from. I think it's going to mention the eight days here. That's where it originated. All right, so let's go ahead to the next verse. For when our fathers were led into Persia, the priests that were then devout took the fire of the altar privily and hid it in a hollow place of a pit without water, where they kept it sure so that the place was unknown to all men. Okay, so the priests have hid this fire. Right. And they've hid it in a place that didn't have any water. That's going to be important that this pit had no water. A dry pit. Okay. Now, after many years, when it pleased God, Nehemiah, being sent from the king of Persia, did send of the prosperity of those priests that had hid it to the fire. But when they told us, they found no fire, but thick water. Okay, so they, in this pit that used to didn't have water, that they hid this fire in, now has what they're calling thick water? Right. What is thick water? I'm guessing it means muddy water. I'm wondering if it means uh, tritium, heavy water. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, what is H, H, what is heavy water? That's, um, they call it D2O because it's deuterium. Oh, okay. I, I don't, might not have been that. I don't know. That <laughs> might have been. <laughs> might have been. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Then commanded he them to draw it up and to bring it. And when the sacrifices were laid on, Nehemiah commanded that the priest sprinkle the wood and the things laid thereon with the water. So Nehemiah, we don't know if he knew what it was or not, but he then told them, okay, you got this thick water, put it on the wood. Right. Yeah, go ahead. When this was done and the time came that the sun shone, which afore was hid in the cloud, there was a great fire kindled so that every man marveled. Okay, so you have this this menorah, this thing that the the oil in the lamp. The thing about the oil in the lamp is it was never supposed to go out. Right. Right. So here you have them finding this oil after this period of you know the candle being out for a while. It's been out for and they're, years. Yeah, and they're trying to re relight it. Can't find the oil. You know, can't you know the the fire's gone. All they find is thick water. So, but now watch what happens. And the priest made a prayer whilst the sacrifice was consuming. I say, both the priest and all the rest, Jonathan beginning, and the rest answering thereunto, as Nehemiah did. Okay, so they start praying. Got this thick water on this sacrifice and this wood, and now they're praying. And the prayer was after this manner. O Lord, Lord God, creator of all things, who art fearful and strong and righteous and merciful, and the only and gracious king. Okay. You go, go ahead. The only giver of all things, the only just, almighty, and everlasting. Thou deliverest Israel from all trouble, and did choose the fathers and sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice for thy whole people Israel, and preserve them thine own portion, and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred. And let the heathen know that thou art our God. Punish them that oppress us, and with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place, as Moses has spoken. And the priest sung psalms of thanksgiving. Okay, so there's the prayer. So then what happens next? Now when the sacrifice was consumed, Nehemiah commanded the water that was left to be poured on the great stones. So wait a minute. So how was the sacrifice consumed? It appears that this water spontaneously combusted when the sun shone on it. Thick water. Hmm. So where say that at? Verse 22. This is after they sprinkled the water. When this was done, and the time came that the sun shone, which afore was hid in the cloud, 
there was a great fire kindled, so that every man marveled. So, there is the miracle. Right. That is the miracle of Hanukkah. When the, um, the thick water that put out the flame turned out to be just as good for kindling the altar. Mm -hmm. Alright, so what happened next? When this was done, there was kindled a flame, but it was consumed by the light that shone from the altar. So that when this matter was known, it was told the king of Persia that in this place where the priests that were led away had hid the fire, there appeared water, and that Nehemiah had purified the sacrifices therewith. Right, now we have to remember that this is what this holiday is all about, is the purification of the temple. Right. All right. So again, this is why we light these candles on Hanukkah is to remember how Nehemiah had to do it. You know, he had to do it by way of a miracle with this thick water here. Right. And I'm sure even if it doesn't say it here, if we look other places or if we, you know, look into timing of this, we're going to see somewhere where they do it for eight days because the temple purification process itself is a seven or eight day period. Right. Right. Go ahead. Then the king, in closing the place, made it holy after he had tried the matter. And the king took many gifts and bestowed thereof upon those whom he would gratify. So this might be why they do gifts on Hanukkah. Right. Might be where that's coming from. Go ahead. And Nehemiah called this thing Naphthar, which is as much as to say a cleansing. But many men call it Nephi. Okay, so again... This is important, right? Because we, a lot of people, you know, toss out the whole candle lighting ceremony become, because it comes from the Talmud. But when we turn out that there is some type of candle. Scriptural origin. Yeah. Yeah. More significance to it. So let's go on to chapter two. Looks like it continues. Okay. Chapter two, verse one. And it was also found in the records that Jeremy the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take of the fire as it had been signified. So this fire now that was created by this thick water, Jerem Jeremy has it? The prophet Jeremy has it? It appears that he had commanded them to take of this fire. Not sure what they were supposed to do with it yet. And now that prophet, having given them the law, charged them not to forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see the images of silver and gold with their ornaments. Now he's referring to Christmas. This, we might need to quit. This video could take a very <laughs> sharp turn here. What does it say next? We might be finished with Hanukkah. He's talking about Christmas now. And with other such speeches exhorted them that the law should not depart from their hearts. Go ahead, keep going. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet, being warned of God, commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God. Now, we might be way off track, but it might have been Jeremy that hid the ark of the covenant in the rock. So that may be what he's talking about here. We read that in the um, Testaments of the Prophets, where it tells about how all of the prophets lived and died and all of that. Right. It tells you that one of them hid it in the rock, and then it was Jeremy, based on what we're reading here. Let me read one more verse here, we're finished with this class. Looks like two more verses to see how he hid it. And when Jeremy came thither, he found a hollow cave, wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense, and so stopped the door. Oh, wow. So there's the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, in the mountain that Moses yeah. climbed up. As far as the commenter saying that she's going to go with the other vlogger, I guess she have to choose whatever she want to do. Yeah. With the with the Hanukkah candles, um, we will concentrate more on the dedication part of it. You know, right. Which, that know, purification, purification, sanctification, sanctification part of it, and we'll concentrate more on what it says to that we're supposed to do. You know, it, it says to treat it like the Feast of Tabernacles back there in verse 18, right? right. Chapter 1. And, you know, we didn't, you don't light candles on tabernacles. 
Right. I think that's the most telling of this, whether we should, if anybody really wants to get down to the truth of the matter, whether these candles are necessary. We're looking here at verse 18, which says that we are to um, do the Feast of Dedication, Feast of Hanukkah, as we did Tabernacles. Right. And there are no candles. No candles on Tabernacles. No tab in fact, there are branches, uh, palm branches there. There are um, um, singing and rejoicing. And the only real difference between tabernacles and Hanukkah is that we now use dry branches, it says in another verse. So as far as the candles are concerned, um, no, we won't be lighting any candles. Mm -hmm. We don't see them necessary at all. It's more of a, like we said, a Jewish tradition. It's not yeah. biblical at all, at least as far as I can see now. I could be missing something, but I really haven't seen anywhere in the Bible. Um, but I have seen all over Google that it is a... Um, um, Talmudish Jewish tradition but as far as the true feast of Hanukkah like I said it goes more along with the feast of tabernacles right and you can see that better described down here in 2nd Maccabees chapter 10 verses 5 through looks like about verse 8 where it's talking about these branches and singing and psalms and all of this stuff right. um, that we do during a thing and for the last time I'm saying no candles in that no candles so with that Chris you got anything else I say let's get ready for the time when he brings his people together so that we'll see when he brings the Ark of the Covenant back out. Absolutely. Will it be on Hanukkah? We don't know. We don't know. Well, tell us what you guys think in the comment section. And with that, we're going to say peace and tranquility unto your house. Shalom.